Hi everyone and welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. For this week's tutorial I wanted to try something just a little bit different with the very popular trending sugar sheet technique. So I made this beautiful masquerade cake topper. I was curious to see if I could enable it to support itself and I managed to do this by using modelling paste. It did take some time to set. I'm going to guide you through everything step by step. This is just an idea. Once you have learned how to do this, you could make any kind of cake topper that you want. Just look at that beautiful sparkle. We've got golden feathers, pearls, We've even got some gold edible diamonds. I show you how everything is done, as always, in this simple, straight to the point tutorial. Happy baking, everyone, and I will be back soon with more new, completely free content. Before we make the mask, I want to make a start on some of the features. So here I have some diamond gel by Ingenious Edibles, a mold, a shringe and I'm using the Regency Gold by Faye Carl. All I've done here is place 10 gram of the diamond gel in a small microwavable container and I've placed this in a microwave for five seconds. You then to colour it simply add a small amount of the Regency Gold luster dust. The reason we are making all of these in advance is because they're going to need some time to set. Using the Shringe, which is also by Ingenious Edibles, you can buy all of these products from them. You simply place some of the diamond gel, which is in liquid form, into the Shringe and then very, very carefully place it into the diamond mould. Leave these at room temperature for 10 minutes and then place them in the fridge for 10 minutes just to allow them to set. In order to create those lovely edible gold feathers, I have the Feather Mat by Claire Bowman and I'm also using this ready-made cake lace by Claire Bowman. I simply apply this to the mat, remove any excess and then this wants to be left just overnight just place it to one side and now we can actually make a start on making that beautiful sugar sheet masquerade cake topper start by drawing your mask on a piece of baking paper if you struggle with this just search google print one off and trace over it Taking 250 gram of black fondant and some Tylo powder, we now need to make some modelling paste. To do this, just add one level teaspoon of the Tylo powder directly to your fondant and knead it all in until it's very well incorporated. Dust down your surface and roll out your modelling paste, but keep it relatively thick, about 3 to 5 millimetres. Remember, modelling paste will set lovely and hard, and this is going to support the sugar sheet. Now, taking a small amount of Trex vegetable fat, simply grease the baking paper so it sticks to that modelling paste. This will make it easier to cut around. With your template now in place, and taking a very sharp craft knife that's just been used on sugar work, Take your time cutting away the excess modelling paste around the outside of that template area and also cut away the eyes. The next step will be to make the sugar sheet recipe and actually add it to this before we allow it to set at an angle. In order to make the sugar sheet, you will need 180 gram of caster sugar, some black food colouring, and a food safe bag, preferably one that you can seal. Simply add the caster sugar to the bag, add a small amount of food colouring to start off with and mix it with your fingers whilst it is in the bag. You will need to keep on adding more food colouring but eventually the sugar will end up a lovely black 
colour. Place the coloured sugar back into a bowl and add two tablespoons of liquid glucose. Start by stirring this in with a spoon and then just get your hands in there and knead it until it's all incorporated. Place your sugar sheet recipe onto a piece of baking parchment and sandwich it inside another piece of baking parchment. Then, taking your rolling pin, simply roll this out so it is the same size as the masquerade ball template. Leaving the baking paper on the modelling paste that you have just cut out. This will stop it from distorting and going out of shape. Add edible glue to the back. I must point out I have not baked this sugar sheet. We are going to let everything dry naturally without the oven and this can take a while. The reason I do this, once it is shaped and in the correct position and ready to dry, because my mask is so tall, if I had placed it into an oven, it would have affected the shape. If your mask is smaller, however, you would be able to place it in the oven, maybe with the oven light on, just to speed up the setting process. I will then pick this up, place it directly onto the sugar sheet and cut off any excess sugar. To allow our mask to set at an angle, here I have a 7 inch round cake tin wedged between two cups. All I do is take my mask off the baking paper and place it directly onto the tin. Do, do be very careful with this. It can easily come off. Make sure it's wedged there. Now, we are going to decorate this first because I'm leaving mine to set naturally. However, if you want to speed up the setting process, you could now place this in the oven with the oven light on and decorate a little later on. If you leave it to set naturally, bear in mind we've used very dark colours. There's all that sugar, there's all that edible glue and the air can only get to this from one side due to the tin allowing it to set in a certain shape. You will need to leave this for a good few days. In order to decorate, I simply take some of the feathers. I take my time, I place them where I think they will look best with a small amount of edible glue. Um, the beautiful gold diamonds will have set. I also add some of those in certain places. And because my sugar is still soft, I am actually able to use a ball tool and add some silver pearls. Very elegant, very beautiful and very easy to make and decorate. But as mentioned, you do need to be patient when allowing this mask to set. So just add as much or as little decoration as you want. The final step will be to then add it either directly to a cake. So this could go on the front of a cake. If it was a six inch round cake, place it around a six inch tin. Or in my case, I'm going to use it as a cake topper. So I'm going to show you how to apply it to a cake drum, which then can then be added directly to a cake. As soon as the mask has completely set, I have covered a cake drum here with some fondant. The fondant is still soft and I'm, now I'm going to very gently push this mask into the fondant. Now, as you all know, fondant on a cake drum will eventually set rubber and hard. So if you keep this in the same place, keep it very still, you can place some edible glue under there as well and just let it all set completely hard. The fondant will actually support the mask. If you choose to not do this, you could maybe place it on the front of a cake. Now this did take quite a few days to actually set, but it did and it looks absolutely beautiful the pictures just do not do it justice give it a try guys and i'll be back soon with more new completely free content